Today on My First Quilt, we'll be creating a quick and easy fat quarter friendly quilt and talking about lightweight battings for spring and summer quilts. Hi there, welcome to My First Quilt. I'm Sarah Gallegos and today we're creating a fun fat quarter friendly quilt. And it's all made with squares and rectangles. It's a quick and easy sew. The most time that went into creating this quilt was fussy cutting the fabrics in the squares. Of course, you don't have to do that. But I had the opportunity to play with the new Tula Pink Classics collection, where they brought back a lot of the fun little characters in Tula's fabrics, and it was a lot of fun to fussy cut them for this particular quilt. So we can see that we've got the little squirrel here, and the bumblebee, and uh, we've got the raccoon and this cute little froggy. Now this quilt is called Spring Thaw, so I thought that it was the perfect opportunity to share with you some of my advice about working with lighter weight battings so that you've got quilts for warmer weather. So let's start by looking at how this block comes together. The spring thaw pattern comes together with just one main block, but you create basically a positive and a negative version of that block. So here it is right here, and we'll go ahead and call this the positive version, where we've got the white squares are in the outside corners and the center of basically a big nine patch. And then in the other four spots, we have a pieced unit. So you're going to create half of your blocks this way, and the other half are going to look more like this, where we have, we'll call this the negative block, the five units in our nine patch are printed fabrics, and then the other four are a print with white rectangles on either side. So it's half and half blocks sewn together in an alternating pattern that makes that quilt, and it really stands out nice. So to create this particular block, all you've gotta do is cut rectangles and squares and stitch them together. I'm gonna create one unit right here. So I've got a skinny strip of my print fabric, and on each side of that, I'm going to attach one of my white rectangles. When we're working with skinny strips like this, it definitely helps to press those fabrics as we go. So I'm going to press toward the darker fabric, and I've done that throughout the entire quilt. And that does, again, as always, I like to enable myself to nest my seams as I stitch. So I've got that pressed, and now I can add my second white rectangle to the other side of my print strip. So I'll go ahead and press again. There we are. And you can use as many different fat quarters as you want in this quilt. And it's a lot of fun to kind of play with the placement of each of the pieces within your blocks. I tried to make sure that if I had the same fabric appearing twice in each block that I kind of separated it and just laid things out in a way that looked nice to me. Once you've got all four of those pieced units complete. Now it's simply a matter of sewing the rows together to create this block. So I've got one row completed here, row two, row three, and then you're just gonna add those together and you have your spring thaw block. There are lots and lots of different types of batting on the market. And here I've got a nice sample pack of the Hobbs batting that I really like to use. And there are a lot of different types within this pack and I always love to keep one of these on hand just to kind of reference and help me to determine what type of batting I want to use in every project that I make. I mentioned earlier in the episode that I wanted to make this kind of a spring-summer type of a quilt because a lot of times we create quilts for warmth, right? We've got really warm, cozy quilts for on our beds, but if it gets hot where you're at in the summertime, it's nice to have something just a little bit lighter weight and there is a batting out there for that. So when I kind of look through here I can see that there are a lot of different types and of course batting comes in several different colors too. Here's a black and you probably aren't necessarily going to want a black with this particular quilt because it would come right through the white. So I like to use instead of even the natural color if you use an actual white batting with a white quilt like this, it really helps to keep that white looking vibrant. And if any little fibers come through as you're quilting, 
they'll be white instead of the natural or the black color. Now, there are also really, really thick polyester battings. These tend to be really warm, as do the wool battings. And this is going to create a much thicker, loftier quilt. And it, again, will be very warm. So maybe not what you want for the summertime. What I used for this particular quilt is a silk batting. So this is actually a silk blend batting, this one right here. And it's just very lightweight. It's soft and cozy, it quilts beautifully, and it gives you a little bit thinner of a quilt. So if I've got this on my bed in July in Michigan, I don't have to worry about sweating to death. I like to have something just a little bit lighter weight. So you can really explore and experiment with your quilt batting. Now I'm gonna pull up a package of quilt batting here. And we can talk a little bit about what we see when we purchase a package of batting. This again is the Tuscany silk from Hobbs that I used in my quilt. And we can see sizes on the bottom of the package, which is nice, it comes in lots of different sizes. But you've got some good information here. First of all, it tells me that this is washable. That's important to me if I'm gonna be using and loving this quilt. And then it shrinks three to 5%. That lets me know that it's basically gonna shrink just about the same amount as my fabrics. So I don't have to worry so much about pre-washing my batting or my fabrics before I stitch it. It's gonna just kind of shrink together. And I like that feel of my quilt after it's been washed a few times and it just gets that used and loved kind of look. It also lets us know here that this is lightweight and has a nice drape even if it's heavily stitched. So if you're going to be really quilting your quilt, if you've done something really beautiful and you want to add all that texture and dimension with your quilting, the silk batting is a nice place to, to be. It also lets you know that you can quilt up to four inches apart. So you don't have to use thick, heavy quilting with your silk batting. You only have to quilt every four inches. So on my quilt, I actually used a more open, loose design that you can kind of see here. I've got a big, open, kind of curvy meander. They're almost like little gears for my quilting. And it leaves me with a really soft and lovely quilt that I can use all year round. I hope that you've enjoyed learning about the spring thaw quilts and that I've inspired you maybe to do a little bit of experimenting with fussy cutting and to explore different types of battings. We'll see you next time on My First Quilt. My First Quilt is brought to you by Baby Lock, Free Spirit Fabrics, Madeira, and Hobbs Batting.